Hey guys, we're back today with another experiment that I'm personally excited about and been looking forward to for a couple of months. I went and picked up a couple of bags of marbles from the dollar store and I'm bringing back my mini arc furnace because I'd like to bring the two together and see if we can get those marbles to melt. So you probably remember from a previous project, we took a piece of refractory brick and cut it to form a mini arc furnace. This thing's capable of withstanding temperatures over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit and possibly even more. Now something that I haven't really played with yet, but I've seen popping up a lot in the comments, is to make glass. But before I actually make glass, I wanted to try melting it first, just to make sure we had the capability. So the purpose of this experiment today is to take some of these glass marbles, strike up a ripping hot electric arc powered by my homemade arc welder, and bring the two together to see if we can actually get electricity to melt glass. Now some of you faithful long-term viewers will remember that the electrodes I use on this arc furnace are carbon rods that I pull out of lantern batteries. And unfortunately, I used my other ones up and threw them away, so we're gonna need to start this project by harvesting a new batch. And there we have it, guys. With that very simple lantern battery hack, we now have ourselves four black carbon electrodes that should work perfectly for this mini arc furnace. Now we can pretty much hook these up and use them as is, but the problem is they've got this goopy stuff on the ends from where they're capped off at the top. But I find the quickest and easiest way to clean this goop up is simply to strike an arc and let it burn for about five seconds. Just be careful not to breathe in the fumes because the smoke is toxic. All right guys, so our carbon electrodes are now prepped and ready. Everything's good to go. So at this point, let's just take one of our white marbles, place it down inside the furnace and strike an arc just to see if we can actually get it to melt. And I think the chances of that happening are quite high. Now I did make a lid for my arc furnace so it can go on top and help contain the heat. However, for this first experiment, I'd actually like you to see the arc. So I'm gonna leave the lid off, strike our arc, and then turn it so that it splashes downward over top of the marble. And let's watch what happens. Oh wow, okay I'm gonna stop it right there because that's only been 10 seconds and I can already see the glass is melting. I'm gonna pull it out for you so you can see. Oh my goodness, that's 10 seconds in the arc furnace guys. That is crazy. So this is kind of cool and very encouraging. Our marble was only in the arc furnace for 10 seconds. It melted in half and then when I went to grab it with my needle nose pliers, it actually conformed to the shape of the pressure. So it's already moldable at 10 seconds. Let's see what it will do in a minute. Okay, so I actually only made it to 25 seconds and look at that, it is completely molten. That is crazy. I stick a screwdriver in there. Wow. That is molten glass. Liquefied glass in 25 seconds. Look at that. And it's still hot enough I can sculpt it around. Let's see if I can pull a little bit of that out. Oh, that's super cool. Well, Mini arc furnace versus marbles, apparently no problem at all. So for this next experiment, let's grab five more marbles and see if we can melt them all together at the same time. Check that out, that has gone completely molten. <laughs> Those marbles are nothing but a molten sea of glass right now, look at this. Oh gosh, that is cool. That is like lava, look at that, look at that. It's like liquid glass putty, except it's actually glass. What? It's starting to harden up here at the top. Look, I can pull it and form strands and fibers. Oh my, what? Ah, look at that, I made a nice long fiber there by pulling it. Well guys, it seems to work pretty well. We just took down five marbles in less than a minute. 
And when I stuck my screwdriver in there and started pulling it out, you could see it was actually very liquidy. Like I could pull it up, I could stir it around. It kind of had the same viscosity as liquid chocolate or liquid silicone before it cures up. I also tried dipping the tip of my screwdriver and pulling it up as high as I could get it, and it made this nice long strand of glass fiber. You know where I'm going with this? That's right, this right here is a homemade piece of fiberglass. Now, it's only one piece, but you can see how flexible it is. If you flick it with your finger, you can see it bounces up and down, and it's got a surprising amount of flexibility to it, unlike a sheet of glass, which would just crack if you try and bend it. So fiberglass seems to have different properties than a sheet of glass. Interesting. For one final experiment, let's take a whole handful of these colored decorative marbles and try melting them down. These are yellow, green, teal, a little bit of purple in there as well. It'll be interesting to see the result after they've been melted and mixed. Man, that thing is full. And you know what I might do to conserve a little bit of energy is put the lid on this time. Maybe we can get them to melt even faster. Okay, I'm gonna pull them out. Wow, that's cool. I'm gonna take the lid off here so we can see inside. Ooh, that's beautiful. And look at the lid here. You can see how toasty hot that got. But I would like to heat that up from the top now, get a little bit warmer. Oh, I'm actually underneath the molten glass. You see that? Oh, wow, that's cool. Cool. All right, let's stop there and take a look. That's cooling down fast, but there are pockets in there. They're super hot. Look in there. Wow, looking down inside. It was almost white hot there. Wow, it just keeps going and going. What? This stuff is amazing. It cools down very quickly, but it pulls like putty. It'd be great if I could break that tip off. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. It looks like some kind of a lava pit monster from the nether realm. And look how all the colors have blended together here to form this charcoal gray. It almost looks like a paint. Ooh, it's kind of smoky in here. Does glass burn? We did it, guys. We melted that whole handful of marbles within about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, but it didn't take much at all. You can see when I tried pulling it out with the head of the screwdriver, it made these nice long glass strands, which are very, very brittle. What I found was amazing about this is it pulled almost like putty. If you were to stick a screwdriver in something like Silly Putty and stretch it, it has about the same consistency. The difference is that after this sets, it's as hard as glass, which is exactly what it is. It's also very sharp and very pointy. Now just for fun, I'm gonna break down these shards, melt the glass one more time, and then take a glob of that molten material and just drip it into a glass of water just to see if we can get anything cool to happen. Shattered, didn't it? Million pieces. Oh, you got on the side of the glass. Whoops, I missed. I was trying to melt down some of this glass and drip it into the water, but I actually missed, and it dripped down onto the side of the glass instead, which is hilarious because now it's actually fused with the glass and become part of it. That's crazy. It's also warmed up the water quite a bit as well. Oh, no, it didn't. It just chips right off. Interesting. I just knocked it off, but it looks like it was welded to the glass because it left a little pock mark there when it fell off. All right guys, bonus experiment. Since this arc furnace seems to be taking down glass without any problem at all, I thought it would be fun to try striking an arc and just running one electrode on the inside of the glass and the other on the outside just to see how quickly it would melt the edge. So let's fire it up for one more experiment to see what happens. Arc furnace versus drinking glass, here we go. Wow, look at that. That is crazy. 
So that was amazing. What I tried doing was holding one electrode just on the edge of the glass itself and using the heat and the flame to kind of direct down the side. And what it did is it made almost like an improvised plasma cutter for glass. You can see it took that thing out no problem. Now as this thing is cooling, it is cracking and spattering and spewing glass all over. We do have this really cool looking molten drop down the side here though. That was so much fun, I'm gonna try it one more time on this opposite end and then we can call it a day. So, quick summary of what we did here today. We started off with the purpose of seeing if we could use high amperage electricity to melt glass. We took one single marble and exposed it to an electric arc in the mini arc furnace and found that not only did it melt glass, but it melted it within seconds. So we threw in five more marbles and melted them in less than a minute. We threw a whole handful of colored marbles in there and melted them down to a bubbly liquid lava type soup. We also found that if we stuck the tip of a screwdriver in there and slowly pulled it out, the glass acts like putty. And if we stretched it out high enough and fast enough, it would thin out into little strands of fiberglass. We tried dripping a glob of molten glass into a cup full of water, but it missed and landed on the side, where it solidified and fused into the side wall, and when we removed it, it left a little crater behind. For our last experiment, we drew out one more juicy arc and tested it on the side of a common drinking glass, where we found the electrodes almost form an improvised glass-cutting plasma torch, where the glass flows away like butter. These were very cool experiments and very satisfying to see the results. We now have the power to melt glass. Thanks for joining me for this video, guys. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then because now we have the power to melt glass.